Now that we've given an overview of key Java functional programming concepts and features, it's time to take a deeper look at some of those features, starting first with Java Lambda expressions. In this part of the lesson, we'll explore how Lambda expressions provide a foundational functional programming feature found in modern Java. We'll also walk through an example to show Java Lambda expressions syntax and semantics. A Lambda expression is an unnamed block of code with optional parameters that can be stored, passed around as a parameter, and executed later. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here, we're going to create a new thread. A thread, as you may recall, has a constructor that expects an instance of a runnable. Recall that a runnable is a so-called functional interface. We'll talk more about functional interfaces shortly. That has a single method called run that takes no parameters and returns no value. This Lambda expression we're passing to the constructor of thread takes no parameters. Therefore, it has an open closed paren as the first syntactic element highlighted here in red. Next, we see an arrow. The arrow is used to separate the parameter list, or in this case, the null parameter list, from the Lambda body. The Lambda body here defines the actual computation. In this case, that will be performed in the background thread we're about to start. Java Lambda expressions support very concise behavior parameterization. If you take a look at the diagram on this slide, you can see that there's various forms of parameterization of behaviors. Some of them are very concise, such as lambdas. Others are more flexible, things like classes or anonymous classes that are kind of in between. And then you can also see that some are a bit more rigid and also very concise, such as method references, which we'll be talking about in an upcoming lesson. This particular example we're looking at here defines a lambda expression whose computation will run in a separate Java thread and print out the famous hello world as an output string. As you can see, when we actually start this thread, it'll create a new runtime thread stack. And that's where the Lambda expression will be executed to perform the hello world greeting. You don't necessarily have to pass these as anonymous lambdas as constructor parameters. Instead, we can do as we're showing here. We actually define a local variable called R of type runnable. And we initialize that with the Lambda expression that we previously had passed as a parameter to the thread constructor. Once we store R in the local variable, then we can pass R to the thread constructor and start that. So it's another way of being able to store these values. You could also store them in a field for that matter. Lambda expressions are very compact and concise since they focus solely on the computation or computations to perform, leaving out a lot of the syntactic vinegar, as we might say. Conversely, this alternative way of writing this code, which would use an anonymous inner class, requires much more verbose programming. You can see how we have to say new runnable, open close, open curly brace, public void run, open close paren, open curly brace. Then we actually have the computation followed by a bunch more syntactic ceremony that makes things harder to read and harder to type over time. A Lambda expression can also access so-called effectively final variables or plain old final variables from the enclosing scope. As you can see here, we define a variable that's a local variable called answer, which we assign the value 42. And then we can actually access that value inside the context of the Lambda expression. This, is, this use of answer is actually what's known as an effectively final variable whose value never changes after it's initialized up to the point where it's used in a Lambda expression. See the link at the bottom of this slide for more information on effectively final variables. Lambda expressions are most effective when they're stateless. In other words, they have no shared mutable data. So here's a good example where we don't have shared mutable data. If you start passing shared mutable data in Lambda expressions, especially if you pass them to threads, then you're just inviting various types of concurrency hazards, such as race conditions or issues with so-called atomicity and very invisibility. So be careful of that. Take a look at the link at the bottom of this slide if you want to find out why shared mutable state is the root of all evil in concurrent programming. Stateful Lambda expressions are particularly useful when they're applied in the context of Java parallel streams. We'll talk about parallel streams in other contexts later, other videos and so on. But for right now, just be aware that if you keep your Lambda expressions stateless, you'll have a much easier time being able to scale them up on modern multi-core processors. So that's the end of our first part of the discussion of Lambda expressions in Java functional programming.